I really wanted to challenge myself to make a mother recipe or a basic recipe which you can then change around based on your preferences. Because I haven't done one on this channel before, I decided on loaf cake, specifically citrus loaves, although you could change it, which I'll show you how to do at the end of the video where you'll see you'll have a lot of creative freedom to change the flavor of my recipe. So we're gonna start off really classic with a lemon loaf topped with a buttery lemon glaze, then level it up a bit in flavor and do an orange blueberry loaf. And then I'll show you a more adventurous take with an olive oil grapefruit loaf with a sour cherry swirl. Now perfecting this mother loaf recipe was understandably very important to get right, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. So when I begin with a cake recipe, I start with texture and ask, what do I want the crumb inside to look and feel like? And I approach this fairly systematically using a relationship tree. The parent categories for all of my cakes are separated by mixing methods or how we aerate or add air to cake batters. I found that this is one of the most influential variables dictating a cake's texture. For the most part, I focused on this part here. Cakes that use the creaming method, such as white and yellow layer cakes, or oil-based chocolate cakes. And they have very moist crumbs and a medium crumb framework. I also have my chiffons, which use an egg white whipping method that creates a more open framework and a slightly drier crumb. And I had to decide where I wanted my loaf cakes to live, but I knew I wanted a super moist crumb with tiny air pockets that creates a close framework. Then I start to plan out the flavor. And to start, I have master templates that I've developed in three primary base flavors. For this loaf cake, I knew I wanted to use use egg yolks because it not only gives the loaf a beautiful yellow color, but the fat will also give the crumb a richness, which will also help with the texture. Primary flavor will be citrus. And when baking with citrus, we can add two fruit components. The first is flavor, a majority of which comes from the zest or the flavido. Now these flavor compounds are oils, which is an essential detail for later on when I make my cake batter. Water soluble bitter compounds are located beneath in the pith or albedo, so we want to avoid that if we can. Both the flavido and albedo comprise the outer peel, and that encases the second component, which is the juice in the citrus segments. And this juice contains far less flavor, but more importantly, citric acid, and that's the sour or tart taste we often associate with citrus. And the amounts of citric acid or tartness of the juice will depend varying on the fruit. Ultimately, I wanted my citrus loaves to have a bit of tartness, but I was a little bit worried about the acidity in my cake batter, so I started experimenting with just the juice component in my yellow cake. Here is my yellow cake recipe where I subbed all the liquid for lemon juice. It came out with a coarse and really tough crumb, but you could taste a slight tartness from the juice. So I cut back on the acidity for my next cakes by adding less juice, but the crumb was still too tough and there was barely any tartness. I thought I could offset the acidity by adding a bit of baking soda to the cake, which would help it rise a little bit and that did give me a fluffier cake. And the crumb was improved, but it neutralized all of the acidity so you couldn't even taste any lemon. I couldn't strike a balance between the acidity and the crumbs texture. It's too inconsistent. So I scrapped using any citrus juice, taking a different route to increase the tanginess of the cake. Here is the mother recipe, and I will show you a classic lemon loaf to start with a buttery lemon glaze. So first I'm gonna prep my pans by adding a parchment sling and spraying the insides with cooking oil. The sling is gonna be essential later on, so I suggest using one from parchment or foil if possible. And I'm going to use Meyer lemons from my tree. For this loaf cake, I'll need some finely grated lemon zest, white granulated sugar, super soft unsalted butter, oil, vanilla extract, salt, eggs, sour cream, water, all-purpose flour and baking powder. I'm going to massage the zest into the sugar. This helps physically tear the zest and help release the aromatic flavor compounds. Remember how I said earlier how these compounds are oil-based? That's why it's always good to add your zest straight into the oil and butter so that the compounds distribute within the fats. The fat will then coat all of the crumbs, giving your final cake maximum citrus flavor. To the fats, I'll also add the salt and vanilla and mix this on high speed for about two minutes. Next, 
this, the eggs go in and I'll mix that for about another minute. Then I add in the sour cream and mix that in until I can no longer see any white. Sour cream is a fermented dairy product containing lactic acid. I'm using it because I decided to not use any citrus juice containing the stronger citric acid, which proved inconsistent and didn't produce any intense citrus flavors. On the other hand, sour cream provides a slight tanginess and paired with the zest in the earlier step will give the cake a nice rounded citrus-like flavor. Next, I'll add some water for additional moisture. And here I have my all-purpose flour and I'm going to whisk in my baking powder. I'm gonna add the flour in three parts, sifting it in each time. Adding the flour in this way prevents clumping of the batter so that everything is evenly distributed for your cake and you get a nice consistent crumb throughout. And once everything looks all smooth and even, pour all of the batter into the prepared pan. I'm going to bake this in an oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about one hour and 10 minutes to one hour and 15 minutes. Now, while my cake bakes, I like to prep the sugar syrup. And although the sour cream does add a tanginess to the cake, the primary source of tartness will come from this sugar syrup. I'm going to candy some zest with my syrup, but this is an optional garnish that requires an additional lemon, which I peeled trying to avoid the bitter albedo and sliced into slivers. Next, my minion happily juiced two lemons that I zested earlier. That was gonna be the last one, right? Yeah. And you'll want around 100 grams of juice for a loaf cake of this size, although it doesn't have to be precise. I usually measure how much I get from two lemons and add half the amount of sugar by weight to a small pan. Add the other peels if you're using them and then bring this to a boil. The sugar is going to dissolve and that creates a sugar syrup that you can really use on any type of cake. And you're going to want to give this a taste. For lemons, I like going for a syrup that tastes like an overly tart lemonade. I usually have to add a little bit of sugar to reach that point. And then you're going to let this simmer on low heat for a few minutes and let it sit until your loaf cakes come out of the oven. And you'll know your loaf is done when a skewer comes out with a few wet crumbs or an instant read thermometer reads around 195 Fahrenheit in the center or around 205 around the perimeter of the loaf. While the cake is hot, apply the sugar syrup. I usually remove around two to three tablespoons of that syrup and place it in a small bowl for the glaze later. The loaf is still hot, so this is where the sling comes in handy. What I usually do is loosen the edges and then pull the loaf up with the sling. With a toothpick, I'll poke holes all along the tops and sides. This facilitates the syrup migrating down to the center of the loaf. Then using a brush, I'll apply the rest of the syrup in my pan to the top and sides of the cake. Doing this while the cake is hot ensures that the syrup stays nice and fluid so it can soak into the cake as much as possible. But even while doing all these things, I found that due to the depth of the cake, the syrup really localizes primarily on the outer perimeter. It's pretty challenging to get that syrup to the direct center of the cake, but still I think you'll find that this doesn't matter too much and that a slice of this cake will still be pleasantly tart to eat. Now once the loaf has sat slightly and the syrup has soaked in but is still warm, you can wrap the loaf for later. The flavor is amazing even over the next couple of days. For my loaf cakes, I like to add butter to my glaze, which gives flavor as well as stability. So I added powdered sugar and super softened butter and mix that until I can't see any more butter. Then I add that lemon syrup that I reserved earlier. Give the glaze a taste. This is customizable. And if you want more acidity, you can add more juice. Or if you just want a more fluid glaze with no acidity, you can add water or milk. I love a tart glaze. So I added one tablespoon of additional lemon juice. The texture I was looking for falls off a spatula with a thickness similar to a yogurt. And I like this texture because when I pour it onto the cake, it creates a chunky drip. Then while the frosting is still wet, I add the candied lemon zest. And making substitutions at this level are pretty straightforward. You could just do a plain vanilla cake by removing the zest and the glaze, or you can do any of these modifications listed here. Now I'm going to show you an easy modification while still staying within the yellow cake base recipe. So it's the same method I went over with the lemon loaf, but now we're gonna change it up by using orange zest in the batter. And I'm going to add some frozen blueberries. Now, blueberries do contain a little bit of juice, so I'm going to compensate by tossing the frozen berries in about two teaspoons of all-purpose flour. Then I'll quickly add these frozen berries into the batter before baking. Using the loaf pan I've shown, you can add about one cup of add-ins to this recipe without worrying that the batter will overflow when it bakes. Also, here are some other ideas that stay within the easy modification level. 
Now for the adventurous recipe, I'm swapping out the butter and oil for just olive oil, which adds a grassy green undertone to the loaf. And I'm also using grapefruit zest. Now, when I was thinking about the flavor combination I wanted to use for this cake, I consulted one of my favorite books, which is The Art and Science of Food Pairing. And the premise of this book is that flavor compounds are related by chemical structure. And if you pair those up with similar properties, they will harmonize well within a recipe. For grapefruit, I found that cherries go well and I don't have access to Rainier cherries right now so I sought out some sour cherry jam and to add this to my cake I made the batter as usual then added a couple spoonfuls of the finished batter to the cherry jam so that it had a crumb texture instead of gummy I then swirled that into the loaf pan and if you want to be more adventurous like this here are some other ideas that you can use with substitutions I think it works as long as you stay within a base recipe this one being the yellow cake and you should be able to make lots of creative modifications and now that these loaves are finished, I know that it sits here in the place where we just throw everything in the bowl and kind of mix it together, which is pretty conventional, but is really what gave me the dense yet moist texture I was looking for. And it's nice to have this part of my tree started, which gets me now thinking, what category of cakes should I tackle next? 